time. Time is a funny thing. It all gets mixed up. The past. The future. There's only one way. Always remember who you are. You keep it straight. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This will be my Avatar The Last Airbender Netflix trailer breakdown. There's a bunch of Easter eggs here. Obviously, a lot of very familiar things from season one or book one. Oh, my cabbages! They haven't said exactly how much of book one they're going to adapt for season one, but it sounds like they're going to try and do everything. But one of the main differences with Avatar The Last Airbender is that there's way less original material from that original series than there was for One Piece. So I think one of the big differences is they're actually going to be adding a bunch of scenes that were not in the original series, that things were only alluded to or references or flashbacks that they'll just expand on. Like you probably noticed in this trailer video that there were a couple scenes that were not in the original book one episodes. Of course, I'll be doing videos for everything when it premieres in February 22nd next year, 2024. So be sure to subscribe to get everything if you're brand new to the channel. Some of you may have been subscribed to my channel since I did videos for the original Korra series. Like, that's how long it's been. Mike and Brian are also separately working on new Avatar The Last Airbender animated movies and animated series with, like, the next Avatar, like the Earth-bending Avatar after Korra. That stuff won't start premiering until 2025, though, so it'll be a while before we actually see any footage from that stuff. But the whole idea with the next Avatar The Last Airbender animated movie is that it's going to take place after the events of Book 3 with the adult version of Team Avatar. So it'll be a lot of stuff that you saw in the comics, probably. But I think everybody's way more optimistic about what this live-action Netflix series is going to be like because of the successes of One Piece Season 1. Like, it turned out way better than I think people could have hoped for. So way more hyped going into this now after seeing One Piece Season 1. But just starting at the beginning of the footage here, it starts with Sozin's Comet, which is probably a flashback at the beginning to explain how the Hundred Year War with the Fire Nation started, because the temple it passes over, because the temple that it passes over is meant to be the Southern Air Temple where Aang grew up before he took off, basically got afraid, took off, and wound up getting stuck in the ice. Then they basically show the Fire Nation attacking like all of its arrows start firing as you hear Monk Gyatso speaking, Aang's former airbending master, talking about the influence of time, like the past, the future, mostly to highlight him getting stuck in the ice for 100 years, then coming out and things being a little bit different. A lot of these events are covered at the very beginning of book one. Like there are a couple different flashbacks, like they break things up a little bit, but you kind of get a lot of that story at the very beginning of episode one. We'll see if they open the series doing the exact same thing that they did during the animated series. Basically like a giant tutorial on the world and what happened to start the Hundred Years War and how things wound up the way they are when the series begins. The whole idea though, the reason why Fire Lord Sozin tried to eradicate the airbenders, like why he's trying to basically commit genocide on all the airbenders here, is because they knew that the next avatar after Roku was going to be an airbender, so he wanted to try and eliminate the next avatar before he could rise, thinking that he would eliminate all avatars, like completely eradicate the avatar reincarnation cycle. So even though at the time he didn't know who Aang was specifically, he was just trying to kill all airbenders so that there could be no airbender avatar to rise. Had he been successful, obviously, which he was not, the avatar cycle would have just continued and a water-bending avatar would have been born. Way faster than Korra, like the whole idea is the avatar cycle is the way they regenerate. Aang was an airbending avatar, the next avatar was Korra who came from the waterbending tribe, and then the next avatar after her, which they'll do on this Mike and Brian animated avatar series, will be an earthbending avatar. There are a couple scenes where you see him going to the Crescent Islands, which is basically the events of the Winter Solstice, where he actually meets Roku, and Roku starts explaining to him what he needs to do, like learning all the different elements before the arrival of Sozin's Comet comes back. 
the couple moments where you start to get Roku's backstory too, and you learn how the Hundred Year War wound up starting, like the whole concept of Sozin's comet, why Fire Lord Sozin even started the war in the first place. Basically, the idea is that Sozin used to be Roku's best friend, like they grew up together. But once he became the Fire Lord, he learned about the existence of the comet, and it would give them basically God tier power. Like all firebenders would become way more powerful then learned potentially he could conquer the entire planet using that power. So it kind of twisted him dark. And that's why he started the war to begin with. Roku tried to stop him, basically wound up sacrificing himself in the act of trying to calm things down. Right after that, Aang was born and Sozin makes a beeline for the airbenders to try and eradicate them to eliminate the possibility that an airbending avatar could rise. R.I.P. Airbenders. When Gyatso's voiceover mentions the future, it shows the events of episode one, basically, Boy in the Ice with Katara and Sokka, seeing him in the ice with Appa, and you can actually hear the ice cracking, so it's like the act of him coming out of the ice. The interesting thing about this, too, is that there is no actual water bending that happens anywhere in the trailer. Obviously not a lot of earth bending either, because I think they're saving a lot of that for season two, when Toph winds up showing up. But after they show Katara watching Aang come out of the ice, you actually see the gates of Omashu in the Earth Kingdom opening as he gets ready to reunite with King Bumi, his old friend who is an old man now. And I know everybody has been wondering about Cabbage Man. There is like a really quick blink and you'll miss it Cabbage Man teaser. So we know these in the series because he shows up during this episode for the first time. Zoom and enhance when you see the gates of Omashu opening. He's like right there, right at the opening. As they pan out the city up to the palace, you see the giant slides that run through the entire city. They haven't said how many episodes are going to be in season one, but I'm assuming it's going to be eight. They'll be about an hour long, so they'll basically adapt about two to three episodes per a single episode of the Netflix series. Then we see a bunch of scenes of what looked like stuff that was not in the original series. This is Zuko in his military uniform at the Fire Nation Palace, it seems like. Probably a scene when he departs to leave on his journey to find the Avatar. Basically when he was exiled by his father, Fire Lord Ozai. You can see Uncle Iroh watching him. Seems kind of sad, like it's probably when they're leaving the Fire Nation. That's why he's so melancholy. The whole idea is that Iroh wasn't banished either, but he chose to join Zuko in his exile to watch over him because Zuko is kind of like a surrogate son to him. And even though he hasn't admitted to it at the beginning of the series here, Zuko kind of thinks of Iroh as his real father too. There are a bunch of Zuko flashbacks that they showed later in the trailer too, I'll get to in a second. Then we see what looks like a giant bird. For a second, I thought this might be the giant owl Wan Shi Tong, but it might just be a messenger hawk. The whole idea is that Wan Shi Tong in the library don't really show up till like book two, so it's like a whole season two kind of thing, which is why I don't think that this is the case. Most of the footage we see here doesn't cover up to the finale of book one. I think they're leaving that off just because the teaser is meant to just show you the beginning of the series, like maybe up to like halfway. Also the surrounding area around here too, like this is all night, so it's kind of hard to see what's going on because it's so dark, but this doesn't really look like the library, even in its current state, even if it were a flashback. So I think the idea is this might be a messenger hawk and it actually might be from the Blue Spirit episode because they did use a messenger hawk during that. That's basically when Zuko donned the Blue Spirit mask to save Aang from Zhao's Fire Nation prison so that Zhao wouldn't be able to take the Avatar to Fire Lord Ozai and claim the honor of finding him, being the one to find him, before Zuko could. Because that's Zuko's whole idea at the beginning of the series. He's trying to find the Avatar to reclaim his honor so that he can return home. So essentially, he has to save Aang so that he can be the one to turn him in. Generally, even though Zuko kind of begins the season as an antagonist to Aang, the real villain of season one is actually Commander Zhao. Then we actually see Daniel Day Kim as Fire Lord Ozai in the Fire Nation Palace. That's where the fires are behind him here. Then we see Suki for the first time with Sokka in the Kyoshi Warriors of Kyoshi Island. I believe we'll see flashbacks with Avatar Kyoshi during the series as part of this too. I think they actually did cast a live action Kyoshi. The island that Aang is flying to here though is the Crescent Island Fire Temple and it's during the events of Winter Solstice Part 2 when Aang travels to the Fire Temple to hear the message from Avatar Roku about what he has to do in order to stop Fire Lord Ozai from conquering the rest of the planet. It's basically putting a ticking clock on the entire series which is the culmination in Book 3. He winds up learning about his past lives, the avatars before him, and about Sozin's Comet in general. It's basically like a giant tutorial for Sozin's Comet. Roku telling him he has to learn to master all four elements by the time Sozin's Comet arrives again, or that's it lights out for the rest of the world. At this point in the series though, he has not learned to waterbend yet. They're still going to the Northern Water Tribe. That's the events of the season finale. Maybe that'll be the season one Netflix finale here, or they push it to season two. It would be weird if they push it to season two though. Then we actually see Aang doing some genuine airbending. They use the classic Avatar The Last Airbender theme music, sort of kicks in. 
This scene is actually meant to be from Zuko's backstory. This is him facing Fire Lord Ozai, his father. It's from the scene where he basically gave him his scar. The whole idea is that he wound up accidentally dishonoring the generals in a war council meeting. So Ozai makes him face him in combat, but he refuses to attack his father. So basically his father gave him his scar and that's how he wound up being sent into exile with the idea that if he were able to find the Avatar and bring him back, it would restore his honor, but it was a task that his father never really assumed that he would be able to complete. Like, he didn't expect Zuko to actually find the Avatar. We see scenes of Zuko in present day on his ship putting up drawings of the Avatar, maps all around the world as he continues to search for him. Now here's the idea. Notice that the picture does not look like actual Aang. It just looks like a generic airbender. That's because Zuko doesn't actually know what Aang looks like. He only knows that the Avatar is an airbender, which is why the face looks a little bit older too. He doesn't know that Aang is a child. There's a scene of Zuko and Iroh fighting together. This might be against Zhao's people because like I said, there's this whole rivalry between Zuko and Zhao during the season. Then we see a bunch of scenes of Azula, probably scenes that were not in the original series. I think they expanded on her role in the Netflix season one because she wasn't really in book one that much. Like she shows up very briefly at the end and is a much bigger character during season two. It'll be fun to see her go full blown crazy town during the series. There's a brand new scene of Katara and Sokka. Not really sure where they are here in this scene just because it's so dark. This is a scene of Aang entering the Avatar state. This might be from when he returns to the Southern Air Temple and finds everyone dead and sort of realizes what happened when he went into the ice. This looks like the middle of Commander Zhao attacking a village. This might be Sokka or it could be Zuko and Iroh getting ready to face him. But the big blast of air blowing everyone back is from Aang using his airbending on all of them. Then then taking off on Appa escaping Zhao's men. There are a couple big scenes of Momo highlighting what he's actually going to look like. He looks pretty decent. This might be how they do Chopper during One Piece Season 2 because we know they're going to be doing the Chopper character. It looks like they're going to Kyoshi Island because Momo is still pretty new to them, like he seems new to them in the scene. And the events of Kyoshi Island happen right after they met Momo, basically. Zoom and Enhance also on the island here. This seems like the statue of Avatar Kyoshi. There's a whole bunch of stuff that they tease in this trailer here. So if there's anything you spotted that I didn't talk about in the video, just write it below in the comments. And because the series is coming in February, we'll probably get a bunch more trailers before the end of the year. Really, really happy we don't have to wait that long before we actually get episodes. We'll probably get a bunch more bending in that next trailer too. Like I said, generally optimistic about things now just after the One Piece season one on Netflix. So we'll see, like fingers crossed. There are a bunch of other things they've already released for the series, so click here for my other trailer video and click here for all my other Avatar The Last Airbender videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.